You have some goal data or some forecasting data, now what? In this video, we're going to take a look at how to model that data and how to visualize it in Power BI. This is going to be awesome. My name is Mitchell Pearson. The first thing I wanna take a look at here is the modeling of the data. This is where a lot of people get stuck and they get trapped. So if I take just a real quick look at the model view here, you'll notice that I've brought in some data for my goal as well as for my forecast. And the way that I'm treating this data is that goal data and that forecasted data, I'm treating them as fact tables. Now, if you happen to not be familiar with this idea and this concept of the star schema or data modeling for Power BI, it is by far, without a doubt, the most important thing in Power BI Desktop. So take a look at the card visual that's popping up above right now. Go take a look at the free class that we have at Pragmatic Works on YouTube for data modeling in Power BI. To take a closer look at each of these tables, if I come over here and I go over to my goal table, you'll notice that I just have a very simple goal table. I have four records, in fact, just for the, the months that we currently are in or have completed for the year 2025. Your goal table is inevitably going to be a little bit more complex than that, but that does not change anything in regards to how we're modeling it, because as long as you treat it as a fact table, if you go down to another level of detail, like goals at the department level, goals at the state level, goals at the employee level, whatever it is, then you just have to build a relationship to that dimension table, right? To that employee table, to that state table, to that department table. And so you just treat it like a normal fact table when you get to that point. The other table that I brought in was my forecast table. And my forecast table is going for months in the future. So May, June, July, August, September, et cetera, et cetera. That way I can see the data as it pertains to the future. And so I've got these two tables here. Now, what I want to do with them is once I've built the model, we want to jump in and we want to visualize it, right? And so there's actually a couple of ways to visualize the data. In fact, even if you're familiar with Power BI, you're going to learn some tips and tricks in this quick little video here on different ways to visualize data. Now, what I was recently doing for a customer when working with a customer is they wanted to be able to see the data for their goal, their actual, and their forecast into the future. And they also wanted to have a line chart that represented another metric. I'm going to simulate that metric with simply the average sales for the year to date. And so the question was, how do we display this data? And we first work through this scenario here, but then they wanted to see it a different way. And I'm going to show you that one and an awesome trick in Power BI. So the first thing we did is we'll build this from scratch. But over here, you'll notice that we have our actual data. We have the difference, meaning how much we missed the goal by, so we have our actual and we have our goal. So we missed our goal by 340,000. We missed our goal by 270,000 here. And then for future months, we're just displaying the forecasted data. So we have those three different metrics. And then of course, we also have our year to date average sales. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build this with you real quick. We're gonna build it. I'm gonna walk through all the little steps involved and some of the little tips and tricks that will help you to just be better really at building out your visualizations. So I'll create a new page here, and I'm going to start with this combo chart. This combo chart is awesome. This is the stacked column chart and line chart. And so when I click on that, it's going to allow me to have both a bar chart, a column chart, and a line chart on the same visualization. And then I'll come in and I'm going to grab what I want to have on my x-axis. So I'm going to grab my year, and then I'm also going to grab my month. So that goes there. The next thing I want to do real quick here is I want to bring in my total sales or my actual. So if I go down to my internet sales, I'm going to bring over the actual measure and it's going to do that. Now to keep this very simple here and so that it's easier to view, I'm going to filter this down to just our time period that we're looking at, which will be 2025. And then I'm also going to filter it down to just a few months here. There we go, August. And then let's go back over here. So we'll go up. And then we're going to go down. So we have 2025, January, February, March, and April. Now we do have through August, but right now we don't have any actual values for the next few months. So I'm not too worried about that. Now my actual is just the sum of whatever I'm measuring. Sum of project hours, sum of sales, duration of phone calls, whatever it is you're measuring here, that's what my actual is. My forecast is going into the future. And so if I go look at my forecast table, all I've done is built a very, very simple measure here. And that measure is the sum of my forecast amount. 
So I'm going to drop that in this visual as well. And now I have my forecast into the future. So far, it's coming together pretty nicely. The other thing I had to do here, which required a tiny little bit of DAX, nothing crazy, is I first built my total goal. My total goal is just the sum of the goal amount within the filter context, right? So if I'm looking at April, what is the goal for April? I can't really put that on this clustered column chart because if I do, it's it doesn't really look good. I don't want to see this this large amount being duplicated here. So it doesn't really look good. So I don't like this. I'll show you another way to model this in just a moment. So I'm going to remove it. What I do instead is I create this goal difference calculation that essentially is going to show me the difference between my goal and my actual if I miss goal and only if I miss goal. So I'm going to take the goal and subtract the actual. If that's a positive number, then I missed my goal. So I come down here and I say, all right, if the difference is less than zero, then blank. We made goal. There was no difference. It's less than we made goal. We're good. If we, if it's greater than zero, meaning we missed our goal, then go ahead and display the value, right? And so if I do this, let's get rid of actual so you can just see it for a moment. If I bring this goal difference in, you'll see it only shows up with any value for February and March. So for January and April, we made our goal. We made it. We did good. So now I'm going to bring in the goal just like we did before. So, or actual, I'll bring the actual back in. I'll put it right here. There we go. And so I have my actual, I have my goal diff and I have my forecast. Now the order does matter here. Um, so keep that in mind as well. Now, the next thing, just to start making this look a lot better is I start doing some really basic coloring formatting, right? So I might come into the canvas here and take the entire background and make it gray. The other thing I like to do is go into columns and for each of my individual columns, I wanna change them. So for actual, I wanna go with more of a green. So I'll go with something like that. I'm happy with that. For my forecast in the future, we're gonna go with something like a blue. A dark blue is what my customer was wanting when I was working with them. There we go. So we'll go with a dark blue there. And then what they wanted for the difference, if we missed the difference is they actually wanted it to be red. So it was red because we missed it. So we're gonna go over here and then I'll grab me a nice little red color. That'll signify that we missed the goal. So far, so good. I feel really good about this. The next thing that I wanna do is uh, kind of add some data labels so it looks a little bit more prominent. So I'm gonna turn on my data labels here. And then I also like to go into the background, make it less transparent so it pops out a little bit more. And then I also like to make the value of my data labels a dark black color so it stands out. There's some other things we can do here to make this look better, but this gets us really close to our goal. Now, the problem that my customer had, let me add one more thing here. It's a very simple calculation that I built for year to date average sales. So I'm going to do this and then I'm going to drop that on my Y axis. And so I have this right here. This is my year to date. Now it looks a little bit weird because of my Y2 axis. I am going to do another video that shows you how to make the Y1 and the Y2 axis dynamic and make them match. That is a little bit challenging because if you look at this report, I have three or four different measures. So how do you make it to where the maximum is greater than the maximum of all those measures? Like, how do you figure that out? I've already done it for a customer during one of my virtual mentoring sessions where I was helping them solve their problem, kind of one-on-one -on -one things that we do. And I'll do another video for that. That'll probably be the next one that gets released right after this. So I'm not gonna do that for now. What I'll do here is I'm just gonna show you kind of where you would go. I'm gonna go to my secondary Y axis. I'm gonna make my minimum zero and I'm gonna make my maximum here 2 million. One, two, three, two, three. There we go. So the line is going to match up. The other thing I like to do with this line, and I'll do a little bit less on the next visual that I do, is on this line, I like to make it a little bit thicker and easier to see. So I'll go at three, four on that, make it thicker. And then I also gonna change it to a more it's actually pretty close. Yeah, I'll leave it right there with the gold color. That looks good. This looks great. I like this. You can obviously do a little bit more to make it look better, to make it pop. But what the customer wanted is they were like, Mitchell, I want to have more of a fillable bar. In other words, if the goal is 1.7 million, I want the goal to say it's 1.7 million. And then if I'm at actual of 1.3, I want it to be 1.3. And I want the 1.3 to be filling up the bar. Can we do that without using a custom visual? The answer is yes, but not with the stack column chart with a different chart and it's tricky and it's awesome. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a second. The other thing I'll show you with this one is one thing you could try is under data labels. You can actually come under data labels and go down to something called detail. Now I've done a YouTube video and it's probably been a year or two, but I did a YouTube video on how to really leverage detail here. What detail does is I can turn it on 
and let's make sure I'm on all. I'm on all. And I can come in here and I could do something like, oh, I want to see the total goal for everything. So watch what happens to my data labels when I click this button. It shows me what my total goal was. My total goal here was 1.4. My total goal was 1.75. So I'm 1.46 of 1.8. That's pretty good. The problem is I can't, it still doesn't give my customer what they were looking for as far as that. Here's the bar. Let's fill up the bar, right? But details is one of those things a lot of people don't know about. They don't leverage. It's really cool. So you can turn that on if you want to. I'm going to turn that off and then I'm going to show you what we did for my customer. So my customer wanted this. They want to have a bar that says it's the goal is 1.8 million. The actual is 1.46 million. Now I still have this line chart and the data labels on the line chart. And so this is actually pretty tricky. How do you do that? Well, this is actually a clustered column chart. This is one of the coolest tricks. So we're going to create another page real quick, right? We'll create another page so I can walk you through this. And I'm going to use this other one right here called the line and clustered column chart so that I can have the line chart there as well. And then again, we'll go through the process of setting this up very quickly. So we're gonna bring in our, in fact, you know what? I'm gonna duplicate this page just so that I'll have all my filters in place and I don't have to refilter everything. So let's switch this entire thing over to a line and clustered column chart. And then I'm gonna get rid of the goal difference. And so right now we have kind of everything we want, except we want to have the total goal, right? So watch this trick right here. I'm going to go down to my goal and I'm going to bring in the total goal and I'm going to drop that right here above the actual. I want it to be the first thing in here. Now, this is a clustered column. They're next to each other and that's not what I want. I actually want the actual to be on top of the goal so we can see it filling up the goal as it goes, right? We kind of have already talked about that. And so here's what I can do with this to make this look a lot better and make this look really cool. First of all, let's go over to the visualization pane, the formatting pane. And I'm going to go back down to my columns. Now, the first thing I want to do is go to my total goal and I want to make it white. So it disappeared. But then I'm going to add a nice little border on it so it pops back in. So now we got our goal, our bar that we want to fill up. The other thing we can do that's really cool is I'm going to go over here and change my series. Notice how layout is grayed out. So I have to be on the all series for everything. And this is the part that really is cool. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to tell it that I'm going to allow my columns to overlap. And I can click on the overlap key right there. And then I can change the space between the different series. Now, if you think about it, what are the series? The series are the, the goal, the actual, the forecast, the different measures that I've added to my line chart. And as I move it, you're going to notice that I'm starting to fill up the space. So I'm filling up the space. And then I could come over here and give it a little more space between categories. So it looks more like a column. And all of a sudden, we're starting to get what we're looking for here, whether we're making goal or missing goal. And so what's really cool about this, and we can go in and mess with these data labels and make them look a lot better. But if you look at February, I can tell that my goal for February is 1.8 million. My actual was 1.4 million. It's a little confusing, actually. My actual is 1.46 million. So let's fix that data label there real quick. So if I come back down to my columns, let's see where we're at. Oh, right here, columns. And I go back down to my data labels for the actual. Let's put that on the inside center. All right, inside center. So right now, my goal is 1.8 million. My actual was 1.46 million. So I missed goal by 340,000. Now that's what this other visual showed. Where was it at? Right here, 340,000. So this one, so which one do you want, right? The default stacked column chart is really, really great and it does a lot. But what my customer wanted is they wanted more of a fillable chart. Now, if you've been working with Power BI for any length of time, you know, that there are custom visuals that really give a lot of flexibility and versatility that can probably solve this pretty easily, but you might have to pay for them. You also got to learn them. This is just a really awesome trick within the clustered column chart where you can go in there, you can take those columns and actually overlay them and control their level or their degree of overlay, right? So I can come in and you could even do something like this where it's kind of stacked a little bit. That's a cool look depending on what you're doing. Um, and so I've done this a couple of different ways over the years, but this is just a really cool, really quick way. Let us know. We love watching your comment below in the video. We love to answer those and to interact with you. So let us know what you thought of this video. Also, maybe you know of an even better way to do this, or you know of a custom visual that does this even better. Let us know in the comments below. We would love to hear from you. If you're not already a subscriber to our channel, make sure to take a moment to subscribe 
subscribe to our channel and hit that like button on the video and then hit the bell icon also so you're notified anytime we do a new video here at Pragmatic Works. As always, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.